In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold an origami Imori snowflake designed by Melina Yuriko Hermsen. I focus on this snowflake right here, and this is the reverse. But if you change just a couple of steps, which I point out in this video, you can also achieve this variant, which looks like this on the reverse. Now we'll need a hexagonal sheet of paper and if you need guidance on how to cut one, I've got a video on that starting either from a square or a longish rectangle. The hexagon in this video has a diameter of 21 centimeters or eight and a quarter of an inch and the snowflake then has a diameter of nine and a quarter of a centimeter or three and five eighths of an inch. The first step is to fold a 16 division triangle grid and I'm going to quickly go through that here, but essentially you're just folding edge to edge and then edge to crease line and then crease line to crease line and so on until you have 16 equal parts between each of these opposite edges. Now once you have 16 divisions on each of these sections, we're going to flip the model over and then take the crease line next to the one that connects two points, make a mountain fold out of it and then bring it to that central crease line and we're just going to crease a small section right here going through about four of these triangles on each side and keep the center uncreased so that we have a nice finish on the completed model all the way around. And once you have that follows a step that you can skip for this version but for this version you have to fold it. So just for this star shape of the Imori snowflake we're going to take a corner and fold it to the second intersection folding in a section of paper and do that on all six corners. After this Folding both versions is exactly the same except for the very finishing part. So now we're going to go along these central mountain folds going through the corners and pinch them into place. And don't go all the way to the center because we want to have a hexagon popping up there like that. And once you have that nice and crisp, you're going to push together that hexagon so that you fold it in half. And you need to push a little and then it should be okay. And then you want to start flattening this. So I'm going to take this pleat right here and fold it over along the next crease line. And same here, just going along the grid lines and then you will also go along here and along there. Always, if you look at it from this side, always folding over and once you have that you can then open this up going along the grid lines and then open this so that you can see the hexagon again and you've got a nice hexagon twist all done. Now we're going to look at this point of the hexagon and then go along one edge of a small triangle and then open up the paper like that and then we're going to flatten this down again bringing this pleat over, folding along the grid and same on the other side so that you're flattening it like this. This is what it looks like from the other side. It's not quite tidy, just ensure that you get a nice tidy tip here. Once you have that we're just going to rotate it a little bit counterclockwise and then we've got the next corner, the next small edge that we're just going to keep as a mountain fold. And we're going to open up the paper and rather than folding through here all the way, 
we're going to pull open the paper right here and form kind of, you can see here there's this diamond shape that's kind of got cut off tips and we want that and then we're going to fold in a valley fold over to each of these sides like this and then flatten this down like that and bring this section over so now you have something that looks like this and you repeat that all the way around And on the very last one, you already have part of it folded, so just pull open the paper and then it should be exactly the same as before. And then you have this flower shape and in the reverse you've got a nice star. If you see any imprecision, now is the best time to fix it. For example, right here, I can see I didn't quite go along the crease line. So I'm just going to ensure that I do so that it looks nice and precise. Next we're going to take these sections right here and open them up and then fold them up like this. And I'm just going to zoom in to show the next one. So then we're going to go to the next one and again open this section and bring this up and bring that up, always going along crease lines then bring the paper back in and the next section bringing this point to the center and then pushing the paper in on both sides always ensuring that you're going all the way to the top here with this valley fold. And then for the last one, just ensure to get symmetry that on the left it's on the top, in the right it has to go below the first one. And then if you flip it over you can see this star is now raised. Next we're going to open this section of paper right here and push this crease so that it's straight and goes all the way to that corner. And we do that on the other side too, just pushing that paper open. And you see here you've got that nice gap so that no paper is locked. And then we'll also have a mountain fold right along here. And then just straighten this out so it goes all the way to the edge. And once you have that, we're going to fold in along these valley folds here. And this section can either go to the left or the right. And that doesn't really matter. So if we just try and push this flat, I'm going to go over to the left. And then flatten the paper like this and this is what it looks like on the back and then repeat on all the other sides the second one looks just slightly different because you've got one already done so let's take a look I'm making that mountain fold and now you can see here it looks a bit messy but it's actually not what I like to do is when you push that paper into the valley fold. I like to tuck this one underneath and then that on top so that it's easier to straighten out. Then ensure that the mountain fold is in place, push it over to one side and then press flat like that and repeat. And then your model looks like this. This is where 
folding the two different variants is going to change. So I'm just going to quickly prepare this stage for this snowflake and then we can look further. So for comparison, if you didn't tuck in those corners in the beginning, the model has these extra tips. The next step actually is still the same, but I wanted to show the two models in this stage because now they look quite different. So the next step for both of them is to take the mountain folds that are a bit narrower and we're going to open one of these up and go along those and push them flat and then bring these two folds below together and then you will see this paper opening up and that's what we want and we're just going to fold it and flatten it. And then you can close this and repeat on the other five of these sections. Just ensure that these sections always go underneath again when you completely flatten the model. Once you have that, flip the model over and then take these small sections and fold them in and then squash this down flat and repeat 11 more times, always going along small creases right here that are actually already prepared. And finally, just so that these tips are symmetrical, we're going to fold in half this small section on both sides and if you want to give it a nicer finish you can tuck those inside and then repeat on all the corners. And then this variant of the Imori snowflake is all done. Now we're going to look at the other one. So again we're going to take these sections with the narrow pleats. They're just a bit longer because we didn't tuck in any of that paper at the very beginning. And then we're just going to pull this straight and again press that tip down and tuck the sections underneath to flatten and repeat all the way around. Once you have that, flip the model over and now we're going to finish this model by taking the section and opening it up a bit and bringing the small edge to that folded edge and this point is going to go over to that point over there squashing the paper like this and you do that on this side and then on the five other corners too so now you can see that you have this paper hidden away and this section is symmetrical again. And then this version of the Imori snowflake is all done. Which means we've now folded both variants of the Imori snowflake designed by Melina Yuriko Hermsen. And I'm curious, which one do you prefer? The star shape or the snowflake shape? Do let me know by leaving a comment below. And guess what? Melina has many more variants of the Imori model, so do check out her Flickr stream for those and her other absolutely stunning work. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you can make me extra happy by giving it a thumbs up, commenting below, and sharing it with your friends. And if you're looking for further models for the holiday season, do check out my playlist of Christmas and winter-related models. Finally, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos, and as always, happy folding!